For the first few years of my carving journey, sharpening my tools felt like an intimidating task. Something I kept pushing aside, leaving my knife dull. One of the hardest things in the beginning was understanding which tools were right. And as a 15 years old kid, ordering online and spending a lot of money wasn't an option. So, before I share how I sharpen my knives, I wanted to make a small simple kit with you. It might not be perfect, but it will definitely be enough to keep your knives razor sharp, giving that satisfying feeling of the blade smoothly piercing through the wood with its beautiful sound. With so many options and tools for knife sharpening, I believe that using sandpaper is the most affordable and accessible method. I spent several weeks thinking about the simplest design to get materials for and make at home with minimal tools. So, I made this. A piece of flat wood from a local hardware store, and I simply glued two pieces of different grit sandpaper for metal. I'll be using six different grits of sandpaper, ranging from 3000 to 180. I'll also be making some round tools for sharpening the hook knife. It's quite hard to sharpen and can be frustrating using improvised setup. So I believe this simple round tool really makes a difference. The length of my tools wasn't too important. I mainly wanted them long enough to hold and clamp to the table. These ones are around 25 centimeters. To make sure I wouldn't have any splinters or rough corners that could be uncomfortable for the hand, I used sandpaper to smooth everything out.
When it came to cutting the sandpaper, I decided to cut one sheet into two pieces. One long enough for the flat tool and the other size to fit twice on the round tool. The main idea was to get as many replacement pieces as possible from one sheet of sandpaper. I used an old Victorinox knife that I reshaped, mainly because I didn't mind damaging it by cutting the sandpaper, which can dull the knife, especially with the lower grids. I could have also used a ruler and with a fast motion rip the paper in an accurate way, but that would have left a torn texture on the edge and I preferred something cleaner. As for the glue, I wasn't sure what to use. I hoped this all-purpose glue would be easy to remove when I wanted to replace the sandpaper on the tool. But I later found out it glued the paper too strongly and I had to scrape and sand it out to install a new piece. I even tried to make the fibers denser so the glue wouldn't be absorbed into the wood. But unfortunately, it didn't help. If any of you know a better alternative, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a comment with the glue's name. Another reason to make sure my wooden piece was smooth and dense was to have the hardest possible surface beneath my sandpaper. When sharpening my knife later on, I'd want to create a flat surface on both sides of the blade. If I had a soft sharpening surface, my blade would end up with a rounded edge, making it harder for the knife to cut through the wood.
With the flat tools finished, it was time to move on to the round tools, which were a bit harder to make. The first challenge was measuring the sandpaper to fit exactly around the dowel. What I usually do is either use a piece of string or a piece of paper, wrapping it around the dowel, marking it, and then measuring it when it's flat. The second challenge was the sandpaper wanting to return to its original flat shape, especially with the lower grids, which were thicker. To keep the paper in place while the glue dried, I wrapped a wire tightly around it and waited for the glue to set. While waiting for the glue to dry, I wanted to quickly talk about my experiences with different types of inexpensive tools and what I like and dislike about each. Starting with this whetstone, I usually use it for aggressive work when I need to remove a lot of material. It's a cheap one, I found in a local hardware store. I've had many of these over the years and while they do the job of removing material from the blade, they lose their shape quickly and eventually become less effective. I've worked with sandpaper for years now. At first, I used it on a piece of wood, but then I found a piece of broken plastic, which became a new surface. It's a bit improvised, but it's harder than wood and easier to carry around and store. The main advantage of sandpaper is how accessible and cheap it is, but it does come with some drawbacks. Over time, you need to buy new sandpaper once it's worn out, which can make it more expensive in the long run. Also, it's easy to cut through the paper when sharpening in a cutting motion, which is the technique I used up until now. I bought these diamond plates online about a year and a half ago. They were very cheap and unfortunately not the best quality. The main disappointment was they didn't reach the higher grits as written. Honestly, they all felt around 400-600 grit. However, they are perfect for aggressive sharpening to create a flat surface before using sandpaper. These portable versions are higher quality but more expensive. When I was traveling, they were a great help because they are compact, light and durable. However, now I don't use them as much since they are small and take a lot of time and patience to sharpen it. I'll add some links in the description if you're curious, but for now, let's get back to finishing the tools. Once the glue dried, they were basically finished, but I wanted to add some lasting indication of each grid number. On the first one I made, I carved out the numbers. It took a bit of time, but I loved the look of carved letters and numbers, so it was worth it for me. Whenever I work on something detailed, I like bringing my carving closer to my eyes, using a small log of wood. This lets me rest my arms on the table and my wrists on the log, 
giving me stability so my fingers can do the detailed work comfortably. For carving small numbers and letters, I use two main tools, a tiny U-gouge and a detail knife. This detail knife is unique. It's beveled on both sides and extremely thin, allowing me to carve with some movement, even on small details. Carving straight lines is pretty simple, just making two thin slices from both sides. The harder part is carving rounded numbers, where I use the U-gouge for the outer cut and the detail knife for the inside, making sure to follow the wood's grain direction to avoid any splitting. One of my favorite little hacks is using the end of my small metal ruler as a scraper whenever I need to quickly remove a thin layer. I even use it on my spoons and bowls whenever I want to remove carving marks without using sandpaper. For many years, whenever I carved letters or numbers and wanted them darker, I'd use a thin pen to color inside the carving. But lately, I found I'm not enjoying the way it looks that much. It takes away from the natural feel. So I looked online and found some videos showing the use of ground coffee instead. I tried it here and really liked it, so you'll probably see me using it again in the future. The tools are ready. My next video will show how I use them and some insights on sharpening. So I hope to see you there. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more exclusive content, check my Patreon. It's still in development, but I already have many videos, both for free and paid members. Thank you for watching, keep creating, and I'll see you next time.